Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on Catholic Church teaching. This is designed to give students a background on what certain church documents are and how they relate to what we are doing in Religion and Society Unit 2, Morals and Ethics. So when they come across certain types of documents and church teaching, they know what they are. There's a description on the basis for the authority. Uh, church authority goes back to the time of Jesus who uh, instituted the church through St. Peter and through the others, um, notably St. Paul, uh, through the writings of the early church and the early church fathers and mothers uh, through to the popes of today. The Catechism of the Catholic Church is seen as the definitive combination and summary of all of what the church teaches and believes. So when you are reading certain things and documents, and you say, oh, where does it say this, where does it say that? You can go back to the Catechism. Canon law is how things are run and the rules and procedures associated with that. It's based on divine and natural law, um, one of the oldest historical continuing legal systems there anywhere in the world. Um, a great example of how canon law operates is uh, the behaviour and actions of priests and religious and how they're uh, like ordained. But it also can be from a civil point of view on the annulment process for marriage for Catholics. Just a couple of pictures of the Catechism and Canon Law. The key, the key types of documents. The highest ranking is an apostolic constitution, and that's where it talks about um, you know, uh, key factors that the church has to address. Uh, the last one there in 2009 was focusing on, uh, in particular, Anglican priests that wish to become Catholic and the rules and procedures that they had to follow. And that's why it was ranking so high, because it incorporated church and canon law. A papal bull, it's got nothing to do with the animal, it's got to do with the words bulla, the old Latin word for seal. Um, the last one issued last year uh, fo focused on the face of mercy, and that is why we've been looking so much at mercy in the past year and everything that goes with it. Motu proprio, uh, papal letters that the um, Pope himself writes, um, but they tend to be more on administration issues and new laws um, for the governing of, say, church bodies such as charities. The main ones that we'll come across are encyclicals. Uh, these are written to people around the world through the bishops. Uh, they most commonly produce papal documents, especially in the past 50 years since Vatican II. Um, they are not infallible documents. In other words, if they say something in the document, that does not mean it is so and binding for life. Um, they tend to be the pastor on specific need. The last one produced in April 2015 focused uh, on the environment and it was called Audato C and it addressed the issue of climate change and how humans have contributed to that and therefore abused the gift that God has given us. The next one is called Apostolic Exhortations. The most recent one was published in April 2016 this year and they are summaries of uh, church teachings and decisions and, and that reached what's called a Synod of Bishops. So it's where people sat down and they've come, they've had to address certain issues. And the last one in particular was the family and everything that associated with the family. And then the Pope himself will produce this document. Pope Francis has a habit of writing a lot of his own work um, in conjunction with some others. So when you're reading these things, they really are Pope Francis's words as well. Um, Amoris Laetitia can um, be seen as a bit controversial because on one hand, there are some clear cut definitions of what certain things are in relation to the family and marriage in particular. He reinforced what marriage is as, as between a man and a woman, and that's not up for negotiation. But there's some other things that were a little bit controversial as well in regards to uh, divorce and remarried um, people having communion. And you might think that sounds a bit harsh, but you know people sign up to play a game, they're expected to follow the rules that go with it. Just some pictures, and if you're ever not uh, unsure of what the you know the type of document it is, have a look at the bottom. They will always say what they are. Papal speeches, uh, the Pope has a great habit of um, being very open and willing to talk to all sorts of people around the world. Um, he's done great speeches, he's spoken in front of people, he spoke in front of Congress um, in the United States last year. And a lot of what he says is, is wonderful, but every now and then he speaks um, a little bit off the cuff. And therefore what people think that he has said is therefore leading to a particular kind of change. So if you're doing any research and you come up with the phrase, who am I to judge? that Pope Francis said um, a few years ago on a plane ride home to Italy. 
That is not the only words he said. He said it within the context. So whenever you read anything of Pope Francis, you need to read it in context, especially if people are going to take and manipulate these statements. So who am I to judge? I'll leave it to you to look up, but in, it was safe in saying that people actually thought this was church, the church going to change things because Pope Francis said it. That is not the case at all. Hopefully this has helped you a little bit. And when you are ready, have a look through this again in your own time. So when you're looking at uh, papal documents now and in, in the rest of the year for your outcomes, hopefully this will be of help. There is the context for it. Um, church teaching itself falls under the, some of the eight aspects of religion. Uh, it qualifies as a religious text. So if you're wondering why we're using this, it does fall under that, not just scripture. Uh, as we are in a Catholic school, church teaching forms a basis for much of the beliefs of the college. So if you have any problems with anything I say or anyone else has anything, I'm just going to refer you know, back to, first of all, this and then other things that we have and say, well, this is who it is. As well as the idea that church teaching, going back to the time of Jesus, forms the basic moral and ethical code of, of not just Catholic Catholicism, but Christianity, and even into many social and uh, political worlds today. Thanks for that. Bye.